always sounds familiar. One week in the parka, next week in shorts. Shedding layers in the prairies in the wake of wild temperature swings is not uncommon. But why is the question? Why are the prairies susceptible, especially in the winter, to big temperature swings? like the ones that we have been seeing lately. Uh, and what are the weather patterns at play here, Kevin Kay? Well, the prairies, uh, they're very specific when it comes to the air masses that can influence the Canadian prairies. Also, the geography plays a big role. So I want to start off with the pattern that we were enduring to finish off this January. We were under a Pacific pattern, that ridge pushing that warmth right into the BC coast. You can see it getting all the way up the Northwest Territories. So this is when you get a lot of moisture along the coast. The coastal and Rocky Mountains take out a lot of that moisture and then you actually get even more warmth descending down the Rockies into Alberta. When the, the flow is strong enough, you can get that warmth pushed all the way to Saskatchewan and Manitoba. Right, those downsloping winds we talk so much about. But on the other hand, this can all be contrasted in the exact opposite way by a colder, more northern pattern, not blocked by any geography. <laughs> yeah, when we're talking about the polar vortex or any polar air coming down, that's coming across a whole lot of land and a whole lot of ice. So there's been no liquid water to moderate this air mass. It can sink right down the Rockies or it can miss Alberta and Saskatchewan and go into Manitoba. A lot of times it gets caught up in the Rockies in the Yukon Northwest Territories and that can prolong that air spilling down into Alberta. So you can get quite the contrast and this change from air mass to air mass can happen in a matter of days. And we actually have the data to quantify how wild the temperature whiplash is in our prairie provinces. Are you holding on to your seats and all hands in for the roller coaster? Yeah, there's nowhere in the country that really comes close to Medicine Hat. So this is comparing the coldest temperature you've ever seen in January and getting the comparison to the warmest temperature you've ever seen in January. So Medicine Hat, 64 degrees. This is stretching back over 100 years worth of January's. And look at it dwarfs Vancouver and St. John's, with, which is well behind the pack in uh, 33 and 39. Wow, and this temperature roller coaster isn't just interesting for water cooler conversation. It can actually confuse plants. It can confuse animals as well, change breeding schedules and blooming schedules, and it can have negative impacts on human health. Um, allergies, temperature, or rather migraines, joint pains uh, can actually exacerbate any underlying health conditions. Why is that? Why can't humans get used to big temperature swings as easily? Well, I'm, I'm certainly no doctor, but uh, yeah, I think it's more so when you uh, get a little bit of a warm up, you tend to shed the layers when really maybe your body isn't ready for shorts and t-shirt weather just because it's five degrees and that feels a whole lot warmer than minus 45. I compare it a lot to uh, in Ontario when we go down south for vacation, uh, it's might only be 20 degrees when you get there, might only be 15 degrees if you're going to say Myrtle Beach, maybe not quite shorts weather, but your body, it feels a lot warmer, even though your immune system might not be able to handle that transition quite yet. We might not be able to acclimate to the transition as easily, but there's nothing to say that the folks in the prairies aren't some of the most hardy on the country when you're able to undergo intense temperature swings in the span of one month. Yeah, and it's not only the people, the animals, I think, need a lot of credit. Cows have it a lot either, easier in <laughs> southern Ontario than they do in Alberta.